All right, welcome back to Fright Night Flicks with your host, Dan and Darren. <laughs> well, that was interesting. <laughs> <laughs> So, if you guys are first-time listeners, we review horror movies, sometimes good, sometimes bad. This one is going to be in the... Both category. <laughs> <laughs> so, we are going over TCM, The Next Generation. Is that what it, that's what it's called, right? That's, the what tech- it's, that's what it's called. And if you guys don't know, we're going to go through all the TCM movies. So, that's our journey. Yeah, so we're on the fourth one. Uh, next one, we got a surprise. Jessica Bill. Jessica <laughs> Bill makes an appearance, but we won't get into that. So... We're going over the next generation and man, this is an interesting one. I would, the funny thing is I've watched it probably three times now and each time I watch it, my opinion kind of changes a little. Are, are we supposed to give our way of our opinions now? Because I have a lot of things I want to say, but I don't know if we want to give it away. What the heck? I love the movie. Okay. You're right. <laughs> Let me just tell you, there's like a prom in here. I said last time there's a bionic leg. It wasn't an actual bionic leg. I think this leg is pretty close to bionic. I don't know what the purpose of this leg is. Yeah. And and there's some like technical things with this that I just don't think it's going to work well. (laughs) Yeah. 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 Let's not go too deep. There's a airplane kill. Yeah. And hey, there's some great sex education in this too. It's bad for you to get all worked up and then not get it. You can get prostate cancer. (laughs) And also we will have a brief appearance from the Illuminati. Yeah. (laughs) Who knew? Hey, by the way, this is my first time seeing this movie. Have you watched it before we reviewed it? Yeah, I, I did watch this one before. Oh, you did mention a long time ago. It was my first time. Pleasantly surprised. Yeah, because I told you, because, I mean, we got Matthew McConaughey and Renee Zellweger, and I, this is like one of their first movies, I think. And I will say, I actually enjoyed the acting in it all the way around. Again, I like the movie, so we'll get into it. That's You better watch what you say. You're going to put yourself out there if you're saying, you're kind oh. of skewing, like, you might be really I'll straight, thinking this is a I'll straight hit. say this. This is one of my favorite TC movies I've wow. watched. All right. You guys, fact, leave top, a comment. Let them know. Let them know what's up. I'll put it right now. I like this one better than TCM2. Shut up. I did. I did like it. <laughs> Are you serious? Okay. Okay. Let's stay. We're going to save all that to the end. Let's start off with a little bit of an intro. We're going to start going through the movie as we usually do. Yeah, correct. Yeah. <laughs> You're All right. So this is this uh, Text Chainsaw Massacre, The Next Generation. It was made in 1994. Director is Kim Hinkle, common name you see all the time because he's in all these. Yeah, he directed know, them all, right? I don't know if he directed them all. Well, to, don't fact check us, but he's been directed many of them. I don't <laughs> know if he directed the last one, TCM3. Yeah, that uh, one was different. I that forget. was different. Okay. So the writers, Kim Hinkle, Toby Hooper, and again, common names. So, this movie is out there. Oh, God. <laughs> All right. The funny thing about, well, okay, I'm getting into the review too much. We got to, do you want to just get into the start of it? Yeah, I don't know. Sure. All right. As usual, we're going to start with our opening scene, which has, what do we call it? The Star Wars type credits where there's the, the text n- moving up the screen, some music behind. Yeah. So, I'm going to read it for you guys. August 18th, 1973. <laughs> he's, he's having a mouse issue over here. That's <laughs> rapid clicking. Your little finger was scrolling as fast as possible. <laughs> August 18th, 1973. News of a bizarre chainsaw-wielding family. Reports which were to ignite the world's imagination begin to filter out of Central Texas. Regrettably, not one of the family members was ever apprehended, and for more than 10 years, nothing further was heard. Then, over the next several years, at least two minor, yet apparently related incidents were reported. Then again, nothing for five long years of silence. (laughs) (laughs) That's so stupid. Didn't you think it was kind of funny the way they introed that? You know, they're like, you know, several years, there were a couple minor things. Maybe it was related. Maybe it wasn't. It's just kind of a funny intro. Okay, I have some trivia on this. So if, if I didn't mention, we, we're going to go through the whole movie, give our rating, and then we'll finish up with trivia, like behind the scenes stuff with the movie. Okay. So a couple things I want to just say before we jump into the whole movie, the plot or whatever. Sure, go ahead. One, this is like a remake, right? Like this is almost supposed to, it, to me, it almost seems like a remake of the first one. Oh, I didn't think. What? There's a ton of similarities. There are like the. There's just a lot of things that happen in this movie that happened in the other one in TCM one. For example, the chain, like Leatherface chainsawing the door down. We'll get other we'll get things to, we'll I don't remember. <laughs> we'll get to them as we go. But I mean, like in this, it's the same 1973. That was like the same 
as the original. No, no, but they're. I think they're what they're saying is like they're telling you this. This has happened. In the uh, past. Maybe that that's is what, what they're it. telling you, and they're telling you they're basically saying there's other movies made, right? Yeah, and actually, when they mention the two incidents, I think that actually is a nod to the other two movies. That's what. Yes. Okay. Another thing, I made I made the noise in the beginning. Like honestly. They brought that back to this movie. I don't know if you noticed in the transitions, they have like those slaughterhouse noises. Oh, I, yeah, I did hear them. So there's there's a bunch of different things that I just think it kind of, like even some of the characters are similar to the characters out of the first one. No, they for sure used a lot of things from the first movie and incorporated them into this, but I don't think it's supposed to be a remake, right? Well, I mean, it's, it's close though, I'm telling you. I think they were trying to go back to their roots because... There's even some characters I believe they were trying to actually get the cook back into this movie. Yeah, that was a bummer that Cook wasn't here. Because we have a character we're going to meet called W.E. Soya. Disappointment. And, <laughs> and I think he was supposed to actually be Cook. Man, he, yeah, he's honestly my least favorite character, too. Conversation is a game of circles. That's Ralph Waldo Emerson. So Texas Chainsaw Next Generation starts off, as any great horror movie should, at prom night. So there, this is interesting. This is a very strange prom because we're first introduced to, well, I think it starts with a guy pissing on a car. Yeah, and not far away from the entrance of the prom. <laughs> In fact, right next to the prom entrance. And you have an adult. I think the guy is an adult, the guy that's drinking beer, that's telling everyone where to go. The wedding's going on inside. We need to put you on the top tier. Okay, right? I was confused on this as well. So there's another guy. So it kind of pans over to this guy. Who's like talking to the kids, but he's talking to them as if they're going to be on a wedding cake or something. He says, the wedding's inside. I'm going to put you on top of the cake in, or something like that. And as soon as they walk by, he's like, I hate kids. And I'm pretty sure he's drinking beer. Yeah, I don't know what the heck he was. What you need to know is it's kind of chaotic, right? Yeah. <laughs> well, I'll also tell you that the guy who's talking about how he hates kids also ends up talking to the guy who pissed on a car. And it's... in. Actually, in that conversation, he's talking about he hooked up with some chick. She's naked. No, she was spitting all over the place. It was like a, a battleship or something, you know. So Calls her a, a dinghy and says a it's battleship. Like a, yeah, says it's like a battleship. Like what? <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's very odd. So I couldn't tell who the adults are. And this problem hey. doesn't have much uh, supervision, we'll say. Yeah, this is besides the point. All you need to know, it's chaotic prom night. Yeah, so it's classic. We go through the prom photos. And in between, we have the classic TCM sounds, like I mentioned. And we meet our first character, who is Heather. Now, Heather goes into the prom. She's looking for Barry, who I cannot wait to tell you guys about. Barry is my favorite character. <laughs> <laughs> for all the wrong reasons. So there's a really odd scene where Heather's inside. She's talking to this la lady who works there, a school lady. She's whatever. looking for Barry, who is her boyfriend. Right. But the more interesting part is her friend in the background in the red dress, who <sighs> walks in as if it's like a fashion show. Okay, yeah, well, it is prom, so whatever. Well, no, but it's like she's going down the walkway, but there's no one there. Okay, I didn't even notice that something's wrong with her. So I honestly, and I'm not <laughs> trying to be mean, I don't know if she's trying to play like a disabled character or if she's on drugs. Okay. She's doing it again. She just does that to make trouble. This is, I, I know where you're going because I, I certain parts I'm like, is she trying to like, yeah, play it like she's got some mentally like kind of a thing? Because I almost felt bad. But then I'm like, I don't think that's what it is. I think this actress doesn't know how to play a high school kid. <laughs> all that, all that, all that, all that. That's what I honestly <laughs> Dude, think there it is. There is no way. There is no way that she's trying to play a normal kid. Well, because she's all upset because that uh, school lady or whatever was like, I thought you and Barry broke up to Heather. Yeah. The friend is like all upset about that. And it's like, she's doing it again. She's doing it. And she's like tweaking out about the whole thing. And then finally she just calls the lady a bitch. Yeah. But I don't think that her be, I mean, I, maybe, maybe you're right. It looked like something was going on like drugs or disability. Cause it, if it, that was her acting choice, that was crazy. <laughs> I, I don't know. Either way it was odd because that's the last we see of this girl. So it's like, I don't even know why that was really in there, but it was weird. So it's funny. We both hey, kind of picked up on and, that. And this movie is very weird. So yes. it is what it is. <laughs> so we meet Heather who's going to be like a classic kind of airhead. Uh, she's a different type of girl. No, you're right. She's an airhead. She's dating Barry. Who's like a chauvinist, right? She's a classic girl that likes the bad guy. I guess, yeah. you know, but in this scene as well, we meet our other two characters. We meet Sean and Jenny. No. 
Yes, we oh, do. Oh, they do come in in this scene. You're I, right. You don't say no to me. Sorry, I, you're right. I outlined this whole thing. He doesn't really know. <laughs> My bad. No, come on now. Yeah, Sean and Jenny walk in the door. She asks about Barry. She, they don't know where he is, but we meet our characters that are going to be coming together soon. Jenny is Renee Zellweger, just so yes. you guys know. Sean, doesn't matter. He's not around very much. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll but tell that's you more. her stoner boyfriend, I guess. Yeah. Uh, so... Heather goes outside and uh, we see where Barry is. Barry is behind like a pillar, just making out with some other girl. Classic prom. And this kind of shows you who Barry is because Heather is yelling Barry. Barry is, I don't know, 10 feet away from her and doesn't <laughs> stop making out with the girl. And you know what? Yeah, Barry just doesn't care. This is just how Barry rolls. Yeah. <laughs> so they make a, they're making out. Finally, Heather catches like comes around the corner, catches them. Yells at Barry, and then we have the classic. She runs off. Barry chases after. Right. He she ends up slamming on her brakes in the car. Barry jumps in, and this is where the journey begins. So while in the car, you know, obviously Heather just caught Barry making out. There's going to be a little tension between the two. They're dating. Right. So this is where Barry decides he's going to explain to Heather why this is her fault. <laughs> Barry doesn't like to take accountability. <laughs> if you ever wondered, like someone like Andrew Tate, like where he got his inspiration, was, probably Barry. <laughs> definitely Barry. <laughs> I mean, it is really funny. The character's funny. I think they did this on purpose. He is very just like won't take accountability, blames everyone else, and he's pretty freaking rude to everyone. They pretty much took like a bad like stereotype or of a high school kid and like put them on steroids yeah, you know what i mean out for so sure let me let me just tell you guys some of barry's lines because there's some great dialogue in here and i'm gonna be honest you guys might learn some things in this as well what, <laughs> this is what not to do <laughs> so here's some of barry's lines i wasn't this is what he's saying to heather okay in the car who just caught him kissing a girl yes i wasn't doing anything i don't know what you're so pissed off about heather says barry i saw you you were kissing her Barry says, Once, I kissed her once. What's wrong with that? Come on, it's like I can't even talk to my friends anymore. I can't believe how possessive you are. I mean, let's be honest. Heather's being crazy right now. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yeah, exactly, dude. This is the craziest lines. Barry, here's, Barry doesn't just say that. He doubles down. Here's his next line. It's bad for you to get all worked up and then not get it. You can get prostate cancer. What she actually says, like, prostate cancer. But anyways, <laughs> yeah. so at Which, that point, which is just a fact. We all yeah, know this. <laughs> yeah, I mean, exactly. So while Barry's saying this line to Heather, that's where Jenny decides she's going to make her appearance. Her and Sean pop up out of the back seat and scare them on accident because she's just all she's trying to do is put Barry in his place. Scares Heather. Heather blows a stop sign, gets into a wreck, and then just decides to leave the scene. Yeah, and this is kind of what sets them on their path to death, <laughs> yeah. right? I mean, honestly, because then they just start driving to. I don't even know where. I don't think they have a plan. This is also where Sean gives a little commentary that he knows Barry and he knows the way Barry was growing up. And uh, he gives us some insight. So he says one of Barry's favorite, favorite lines as a kid was that his father's a doctor and girls could get breast cancer. So he would tell them that they had to let him fill them up in order for them not to get cancer. That's assault, brother. <laughs> Barry is just on another level, man. Yeah, Barry's crazy. So he also makes it very clear. I love it in these movies when there's like a character, like Renee Zellweger, she's not even close to ugly. Like, <laughs> but they, they have characters that are like Barry who just... His point is to make you think that she's ugly. Dude, Barry lights her up so bad. You never date in your life, you're so ugly. She is not. <laughs> <laughs> it's brutal. And yeah, you're right. That's the funniest thing. Obviously, Renee Zellweger is very attractive. And they act like she has a terrible body, which obviously she does not. Well, no, they don't. <laughs> Jenny or uh, Heather says that she actually has a good body. Later, but Barry, you know. Yeah, Barry's, Barry's on her. Being Barry's Barry. on her. Well, this, well Barry, did you notice Barry's move he tried to put on her? No. <laughs> This is great. Jenny's in the back seat and Barry turns around and he said, cool dress. This is like his quote from the cool dress. And then he goes, what's this? And he reaches down towards her boobs. And then he, then she's like, Barry, she, he, she, he goes, what's the matter? I'm afraid somebody might find out you have tits. <laughs> yeah. Okay. You're right. You're right. I he tried that. to fill her up in front of Heather. Like, what is this guy doing? I mean, I think we all know. Dude, Barry just has a... There's an animal. I don't know. What am, what am I supposed to say about that? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So the kids go on their merry way. They travel down this road again. They just got in a hit and run. And I, I think the idea is that they're just panicking, driving away. Right. 
I guess. I, they didn't really seem like they were panicking. They seemed to not really care. But the thing is, they're, they, they're like lost and they just left their high school, which is kind of funny. Whatever. We're yeah, not going to nitpick too much. But Yeah. So they're driving down now this like kind of dirt road. And this is where a just random car comes out of nowhere and hits them. You know what else I noticed actually when I rewatched it? They went through like they're not supposed to go this way. There was like barriers up and they went around it, which is just interesting. I didn't even notice that the, the first time. I thought they took the detour. I thought they went around the whole thing. I thought the road was blocked and they took a ride. I'll show the image. We'll see. <laughs> I'm pretty sure they took the detour down down the road. Okay. All right. If they did. So this car comes out of nowhere and T-bones them. Now, there's something interesting, though. And we both caught this because <laughs> we talked about it. And I took an image. I'm sure you'll show it, too. The, you, if, you, you can, like, if you watch close, you can see this real time. The guy who hits them goes from like a normal dude sitting up in a seat to a passed out kid, a totally different person. Okay. So when I watched the accident, I'm like, something looked weird. So I would put it in the editor and I slowed it down. You see the car, <laughs> the car that hits the kids. You see both cars actually. And the car, one car, they both stop after the accident. And in the car, both are men driving. And then it cuts to the, the kids in the car and the guy in the other car who's, uh, yeah, apparently hit the windshield and he's on the wheel. So they screwed up the edit really bad. <laughs> yeah. So basically the stunt driver and the kid that is going to be unresponsive here in a second, we'll talk about total. Don't look anything alike. And it's pretty obvious. So I mean, it's just it, funny. Yeah. It's like, I'm not an, a movie editor. I would have cut that a little bit earlier. You didn't have to show the car stop. <laughs> well, because you could see the guy stop and then he goes back in his seat too, you know? In my mind, he almost looked over at the other stunt driver like, okay, we did it. All right, good. Yeah, it's <laughs> <You okay>? over. <laughs> Some of these aren't the highest budget films, you know what I mean? Yeah, a question. So we're going to find McConaughey in a little bit. Was he popular when this movie came out? I don't think so. I, I believe this was Renee Zellweger's like first movie, but I could, it's like they were, I don't think they were popular like that. Okay. So... Anyways, they get in this accident. They find the kid. He's totally unresponsive in the front seat, but he do, he does like wake up only to say he's fine, then like pass out. Yeah, as per usual. <laughs> that's, so, that's how it works with concussions. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So the kids get out. They decide we need we have a we have to do something. We got to get help. None of the cars will start. It's a mess. They have a little discussion. They decide one person stays with the kid, which is going to be Sean. Yep. So then we have Jenny, Barry, and Heather off into the woods to find help. Yeah, and now it's like a foggy night is what it's turned into. Which I also find funny. So so we go from there, we go into the woods, right? They start walking through the woods. They have one flashlight. And this part I thought was funny because they do something to where they drop the, like Barry drops the flashlight and it goes out and he's like, they make it a point that it's so dark, but in the movie, it's so bright. It is so bright. Like right? They zoom in on his hand. Like he has to like go by Phil to find the flashlight, but it's like glowing, you know? <laughs> Wait, we forgot to mention when they got in the accident, it's cause, uh, what's her name? What uh, was my Heather? Heather saw something they sh and they flashed to the woods. I slowed that down too. There was nothing there. No, I didn't even think that was a big part. I think that was just like, a. Is that why? That's what caused the accident. That said, didn't cause the accident, though, unless she blew through a stop sign. It just looked like she, they said, she said, what's that? And then, then all of a sudden it's like, oh, and then car crash. Yeah. It's, it was confusing. As per like, just like with TCM3, these car crashes are always confusing on how they happen. Yeah. They're just kind of random. This one seemed very random. Whatever. But whatever. So the kids are traveling through the woods, right? Right. They come across our next character of the family, who's going to be Darla. Prom night. And Darla's interesting. She's got a little sex appeal, right? Darla's, yeah, she's got a little sass. She definitely, I mean, she definitely has tits and wants to show you. <laughs> They're always doing something to get me to flash them. <laughs> okay, That's well, not okay. just me saying that, okay? It happens. It happens, guys. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> she wants, I mean, she, she sits next to Jenny. Well, let me get to it. So she's in like a single wide office do you know what does she do is she like a real estate agent or something yeah because she said she talks about commission i think she does do something with real estate okay that would make sense because she seems like a real estate like she's kind of dressed like that yeah so they so, stumble upon this real estate office so the kids are with darla there's a little small talk they're kind of all just like chilling out and complaining about water and whatever <laughs> darla's talking to i think she talks to jenny about her boobs or whatever like she does a lot of boob talk yeah yeah and then she calls on the phone they think they're she's calling for help but really She's calling Vilmer to tell him about the, where the accident happened and that he needs to show up there. And you may say, who's Vilmer? Well, we're going to tell you right now. Because, Freaking legend. <laughs> yeah, because we cut over to the accident scene where Vilmer is pulling up in a tow truck 
and Sean is there with the unconscious kid. Yep. Now, did you notice the name of the truck? No. What is it? Illuminati wrecking. Oh, that's so funny. I didn't even notice that. <laughs> the Illuminati wrecking. A little wrecking. on the nose, huh? <laughs> yes. And that'll cut you me. Hey, hey, I get it, guys. You're listening. You're like, what are the F are they talking about? <laughs> and uh, that's how I felt. This movie has a, one key point where it takes a turn. We're not there yet, though. Yeah. If you thought it was weird so far, it's going to get weirder. <laughs> yeah. So Vilmer gets out of the truck. We get the first look at this bionic leg. You can hear like, wah, 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 you know? <laughs> he gets out he's going to check on the kid and uh he breaks the kid's neck yeah so <laughs> Vilmer's going over to check on that kid whoever it was i don't even know who the guy is and the uh sean's like hey he's alive Vilmer's like no he's dead and then sean's like no i heard him like you know making noise and Vilmer just grabs his neck and twists it <laughs> just a little snap he's dead now done he dead now <laughs> so that turns into sean running from his life from the truck there's a chase scene and sean refuses oh to actually God. get out of the way of the truck okay vilmer's going backwards in the truck vilmer mcconaughey is driving backwards sean is running away sean could just run off the road and be fine but yeah. he does not <laughs> yeah vilmer honestly sometimes it doesn't even seem like he really cares if they want to get away but if they're going to be in his way he's going to run them over that, that is what it seems like <laughs> yeah so, so sean got trucked sean is it, sean is gone and an interesting thing i like the way they did it because vilmer runs him over but then he turns on the radio and then he just goes back and forth just to make sure it's done oh! So we cut back to the kids. They're leaving Darla. They go back on a walk through the woods and they're going back to the accident site to see when the help's going to arrive. Right. On the way, though, a truck comes down the road and kind of swerves purposefully to avoid the kids and drives down an old dirt road by himself. At this point, Barry and Heather decide they want to chase the truck and just leave Jenny on her own. I thought that was weird because Heather did call for Jenny to hurry up, but it's like, why are you chasing this truck? Obviously, you're not going to catch it. It's yeah. taking off away from you. You know, in this truck, too, it, to me, it looked like Cook's truck. And oh. I know Cook isn't Cook isn't in this movie, but I, I wonder if it was a throwback to him. Because Darla does talk about the old man across the way that works at the service station. Oh, you're right. So across from where Darla's office is the Cook, I think it is the gas station. You think maybe somebody there could give us a ride? That old man? Oh, he is liable to shoot first and ask questions later. Oh, that's funny. I didn't even notice that. Yeah. Okay, that would make sense. Yeah, because this truck just passes, doesn't seem to care about the kids at all, right. which is odd. But they, yeah. they never, we never see the truck, at least to my knowledge again. So we have a classic split. At this point, these are the only three that are left. So Jenny's on her own. We have uh, Barry and Heather. They go trying to follow this truck. And Sean's dead. <laughs> Sean's dead, yes. So Barry and Heather come across the new family house. So they follow the truck. That's where the truck ended up. But before they get there, Barry and Heather have an interesting conversation. Oh, yes. This is where we get to know a little bit more about both of them. <laughs> yes. So they're talking again about all they've been through today. And like Barry cheating on her, her reaction to it. And Heather just wants to let you know a little about herself. And basically she explains that she's like her mother, that she only wants to be with a guy for money. Mm -hmm. And that's really the best way to get it. Even if the guy's a jerk. It's okay if you're in it for money. <laughs> yes. And my, my favorite part is Barry. He's like, okay, fine, but you should have said something. And it's like, what? <laughs> Dude, the whole conversation. they're cool with it. It's not like they're fighting. Barry's like, oh, okay. I understand. I just wish you would have said something earlier that she's just with you for your money. <laughs> yeah, it's very confusing. So, again, Barry cheated on her. Heather explains to him that she, she actually calls herself a bitch. Yeah. And she says that she's only with guys for money and that's the best way to get it is even if you have to be with a jerk with money, it's fine. Barry gets annoyed with that. She didn't tell him that earlier. And then Heather kind of like takes the blame that it's her fault because that's the way she is. Yeah. It, it doesn't make any sense. Well, no, and it only I guess it's just the way Barry does it. Everything becomes someone else's problem, not Barry's. Like, I guess like, so. Heather's in trouble for Barry cheating on her. <laughs> But, it, but she's okay with that. It, it, the whole thing is like super weird. But at least you know a little bit about them now. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So we arrive at the house. Now we get to the front door. Nobody's home. Barry decides he's going to go around to back the back. Heather takes a seat on a swing and like a porch swing. Uh-huh. 
Now, this is where things start. There's two two real events that happen. Leatherface sneaks up behind Heather and just starts gently caressing her hair. Yeah, this is our first Leatherface sighting. At first, yeah. I wasn't even sure who it was because the face is quite different on Leatherface. It face. is, yeah. Yeah. He, and so, but he's really, you're just seeing, he's kind of just interested in her. He's not trying to hurt her. Just kind of just sniff some hair. You yeah. Know, we've, been, we've been there. Yeah. So, uh, <laughs> and then at the same time, Barry meets W.E., so we have uh, W.E., who is a very interesting character. He is the worst character in this movie. I propose to fight it out on this line if it takes all summer. That's Ulysses S. Grant, he in speaks, my opinion. He speaks in quotes. He's really, to be honest, I don't think he fits at all. I don't think he fits. He honestly is more of like a hillbilly. I don't know what you want to describe him, hillbilly type. But there's nothing really that interesting other than he just quotes everything. And I don't know if it's just the, when the movie was made. I don't even know what half these quotes are, if they're real. Yeah, I mean, I think they're real. I imagine they would be. But, but they're not even, like, interesting. No. But or he, funny. <laughs> no, he's just kind of a zero. So but he, he does have a shotgun. He does have a shotgun. He's holding Barry hostage. Now, back to Leatherface. Heather eventually catches on something's touching her hair, turns around, screams at Leatherface, which I think scares him more than, you know, her. And I will say, I like this because it does remind me of the original Leatherface. I felt more like this Leatherface was more of the original compared to like TCM 2 or 3, where Leatherface is just like this curious dummy. Yeah, he's, he's mentally disabled. Like, that's, that's what he is. Yeah. So he kind of freaks out and he grabs Heather. He doesn't know what to do. There's a chase in the house back and forth. Long story short, she ends up in ice chest. Yep. So again, we're kind of back to TCM 1. He was in the ice chest, yeah. Yeah, so, that's she, true. so she's in the ice chest. We'll jump back to Barry and W.E. out front. <laughs> now, <good>. Barry, <laughs> Barry's such an idiot. Okay, <laughs> so hey, he... Watch your tone with Barry, all right? So W.E.'s got the shotgun on Barry, and Barry's trying to tell W.E., oh, my girlfriend's in trouble, W.E. doesn't care. Long story short, Barry just opens the door, locks it behind him, and W.E.'s stuck outside of the house. Barry is now inside of the house, which apparently he thinks he's very safe now. Dumbass. So this mother Barry <laughs> goes into the house. He breaks into. I mean, he's now broken into their house, right? Well, yeah, but he had no choice. He had a gun on him. I, I could understand that part. Yeah, but doesn't care. Calls the guy a dumbass, but that's not the end of the disrespect. He finds a toilet in the house, decides he's going to piss in their toilet. But that's not even the worst part. This guy doesn't even flush the toilet <laughs> or put the seat down. Could care less. And while he's pissing the whole time, he's trying. He's talking as if Heather's next to him. He's just talking openly about how much of an idiot that other guy was, W.E., and how he, like, fooled him. Yeah, keep in mind, guys, he doesn't know whose house this is. If someone's in the house, he doesn't even know if Heather's even there. He just exactly. Knows, he's just talking. <laughs> yeah, it doesn't even flush the toilet. Just walks away. <laughs> it's Barry, man. Yeah, little and no, I mean he doesn't care either. This house is filthy. Yeah, we're back to the original family house. It's it, dirty. It's just funny that someone goes into a house and just acts as if it's their own house. <laughs> yeah, so, and there's a guy outside with a gun. Okay, right. <laughs> but if you're getting tired of Barry, that's good because Barry is about to get dealt with. He walks away from the toilet. And meets Leatherface with a mallet. Yeah, was it? A, it almost looked like a sledgehammer. I thought it's the same thing. I thought it was a sledge. It looked long. Yeah, but one hit, and then <laughs> Leatherface also throws some kicks in. Yeah, he well, he's freaking out. These people are in his house again. I don't know. He's you know bad guy. Well, in this situation with Barry Leatherface, it's understandable. Now Leatherface putting the girl in the freezer. That was a little bit on. That's on Leatherface. Yeah, she's on his property, but we won't, we won't get into that. So he grabs Barry, takes him to the freezer. We have a problem, though, because Heather's in the freezer. Barry or uh, Leatherface has run out of space. Oh. So yeah. what he has to do, he has to go in the freezer, grab Heather. Heather goes to the hook. Barry goes in the freezer. Dude, the hook, too, man. There, I don't get over. I can feel that like when they get placed on it. I know. Oh, it's because they always like lift them up and then there's like that little drop onto it. You know, uh, like, it's, br it's a brutal way to, I mean, it's iconic for a reason, you know? Yeah. So our time at the family house is coming to an end for now. We have to flash back to Jenny. Now, Jenny, again, she was looking for that accident scene, but it seems to have disappeared. There's no more cars or anything. We find a hubcap on the road. Oh, okay. <laughs> I didn't remember that. Yeah. <laughs> Vilmer's cleaned up the scene. And then we hear the truck come. Vilmer arrives. Now, 
Vilmer wants to pick up Jenny, and this conversation from the start is aggressive. Don't need to be walking these roads alone this time of night. Why don't you get in? Are you the one that moved the cars? Listen, either you want to ride or you don't. It's up to you. Dude, McConaughey, I love. I honestly love the way he plays the character. It's aggressive, and he's just like pissed off the whole time. I like the way he plays it. It's just so weird and I, cold. It's, it's so over the top aggressive. Scaring you? You're not scared. You don't know shit about being scared, little girl. Not yet. Yeah, but that's what I like. I don't know. <laughs> It's like, it, he's a predator. We'll say that. Well, that's what I'm saying. He's just yeah. a killer, dude. He's got no soul. So, yeah, that's true. So, he, yeah, he does. They have this conversation. He's like, get it or not, whatever. Well, then he gets a little aggressive. He gets handsy very quick. So, he makes Jenny look in the back seat. And, or it's not the back seat, through the window or something. I don't even know where these kids are. Maybe they're in the, the bed of the truck. Yeah, and at this point, Jenny doesn't know Vilmer's bad because she just remembers talking to Darla. Said Vilmer's a little rough around the edges, right? But Jenny can tell this is going bad quick. I think at this point she knows he's bad. I mean, I think he grabbed her head and is like slamming her into the back. To I look. mean, at that point, yeah. And that's when she sees some dead bodies. Yeah, so we have Sean and then the unconscious kid are both dead in the back. Jenny at this point decides she's got to get out of the situation Jumps out of the truck, rolls down the hill. She's in the forest. Vilmer's kind of looking for her, but I think he shuts off his light and kind of like breaks off. Yeah, Vilmer was chasing her with the truck. She goes into the, okay, so this part, she goes into the woods. So she's away from the truck. The truck can't go through the woods. She goes like three feet into the woods and just stops. Why yeah, but you, she's hidden. Uh, it doesn't seem that hidden. I would have kept running through the Vilmer woods. didn't seem to see her. Hey, I'll give her credit. She made it to the woods. I would have kept running, other, but okay. Yeah, I agree, but. She made it to the woods. Doesn't seem like you agree, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so she thinks she's safe from Vilmer, but our friend Leatherface arrives. Yeah, Vilmer leaves, and then all of a sudden Leatherface comes and starts chopping trees down. Yeah, so <laughs> we have again, this is like a nod back to the TCM one. It's the chase through the woods. Jenny's running away, Leatherface is chopping branches. So they make it to the family house. Now we have a lot of nods again back to that TCM one. Leatherface has to take out the front door while he's doing that. Jenny runs the second floor. Yep. Now, I think in TCM1, that's where we found Grandpa and Grandma. Yeah, on the second story. Yep. This one, we find a police... Is it a mannequin? Dude, this was... Okay, that's funny you say that, because I don't know what the heck this was. I think it was a... What I took it as is they had stuffed a real body. That's what it looked like, right? I don't, know, I don't know the terms of this. <laughs> <laughs> but it looked like a real person, a real police officer they had killed and stuffed, and who has a pistol. That I do agree with you. There, He had like a blue tone to him or something. Yeah, it was or ashen. I don't know. It looked odd, but she finds a gun on this mannequin, comes down the stairs, tries to shoot Leatherface. The gun doesn't fire. There's no bullets. Right. Decide, throws the gun, and then we have another chase. She runs out, jumps out the second floor window. Dude, I, I love the window jumps. Again, a nod to the TCM1. Yep. <laughs> so jumps out the second floor window. Now, I actually like this chase here. So she's on the rooftop. Leatherface comes out. It's a freaking steep roof, though. It's a steep steep roof and it has probably the flimsiest chimney i've ever seen yes yes <laughs> yeah so leatherface stops at the chimney because he can't go down where jenny slides down to an antenna because it's too steep so he just starts like hitting bricks off it like it knocking just falls it down. apart it is not yeah. well constructed but it's an old house understand i like the, the leatherface move though like i can't make it to her i'm just gonna destroy this chimney and maybe a brick will fall down on her i mean i do like it because leatherface just destroys that's what he does yeah yeah so she makes a very strange move and climbs an <laughs> antenna where nowhere to go. I thought about that too. And I'm like, you know, I was thinking about it. I'm like, okay, I guess you could think climb an antenna. At least he's not going to chop you up there. But like you said, well, where do you go after that? There's nowhere to go <laughs> at no all. Way. You just climbed up like three feet higher and <laughs> there's, yeah, totally stuck. So long story short, she, Leatherface, I think chops it down or something. I don't know. She jumps onto like a zip line. <laughs> okay there is no way there is no, <laughs> way. no way she's gonna be able to hold on to that no way no way at all it's like a it's like a wire it looks like a either it's telephone per, wire maybe it has to be a telephone it wire it can't be a, is that I even safe to a grab? power line yeah I, was, I don't know if you're supposed to be grab. i don't know i've never seen one you could actually hold weight on yeah all right. so she grabs on shimmies across Leatherface cuts it she falls down onto the ground and uh, doesn't die, so that's good. <laughs> no, she's just kind of like laying there, kind of concussed. Like she just fell. She fell a pretty good ways, so she doesn't really know what's going on. So she recovers on the ground. Leatherface shows up, and the chase is on again, back through the woods. And just, okay, 
obviously this is a lot of do you understand now why i said this is like tcm1 well how's oh yeah yeah there's it's a all, lot of sim well, similarities yeah this next scene is like straight out of TC tcm1 okay well i don't remember like, what it is well instead in the first movie where sally runs through the woods to the cook gas station. Remember where she arrives yes. with cook. So in this movie, we have Jenny who's running through the woods being chased by Leatherface. She runs back into Darla's office, oh. finds Darla runs in there, tells her, that, you know, crazy guys chasing me through the woods. Darla says, don't worry. Don't worry. I'll take care of it. Makes a phone call, which she, you know, honestly though, Jenny should be a little more suspicious now that I'm thinking about it because she sent Vilmer there. Vilmer was very bad. I guess in her mind, she maybe thinks Darla didn't know that, but yeah, she should have a little red flags on this. So what happens here is Darla made the phone call, but it's to W.E. this time. Yeah. So W.E. shows up and he's got like a cattle prod or something. A weak weapon. Again, W.E. Not scary. Not into the character. He's just got a prod and it doesn't really hurt her. It just kind of annoys her. <laughs> yeah, it shocks her. So he's kind of going around shocking her. They end up like just knocking her out, bagging her, taking her back to the house. So, yeah, they put her in her bag, put her in the trunk of Darla's car. And now we move to where Darla is transporting Jenny in the back. Oh, and this gets this gets very odd because Darla, you know, I like what I like about Darla. She's kind of the same person the whole way through. Nothing really phases her. She's just kind of this chill like country girl. Well, that's that's true. It's Darla's character is a strange one. Because it seems like she's here not really because she wants to be, which we'll talk about when we get there. But she does. She fits in with this family. Like yeah, she likes this stuff. She I almost. Guess. I feel like she almost likes Jenny a little bit. Like she like gets along with her. She tries to console her. I don't feel like that's fake. I feel like she actually kind of does. She's just insane. Yeah. I think that's the thing. To, that's the thing to get out of all this. All these people are insane. Sometimes they can be good. Sometimes they can be bad. Yeah. Except for Vilmer. He's always bad. Vilmer's bad <laughs> through and through. Did you notice too? W E had like some cook moments where he's like hitting her in the bag, kind of that laughing, hitting her, but yeah, not he really did. hurting her. <laughs> what if I was to turn you loose, huh? You're right. He is kind of cookish. Even his body stature is just kind of a skinnier, like whimsy guy. Yeah. So Darla's on her journey with Jenny in the back, and this is where again the family's starting to change now. This is where I would say we're starting to depart from the original TCM into a different world okay because the family likes pizza oh yeah they're not cannibals in this one no they're not cannibals they're pizza eaters so darla <laughs> tells we to let everyone know she's gonna grab some pizza on the way with right. jenny in the trunk <laughs> yeah what she does she goes to the pizza and then even the pizza guy when she's or but by the way i've never ordered pizza through a drive-thru that's a great point i haven't either yeah, yeah, it's a drive through pizza burger place or something. Is that a Texas thing? I don't, I don't know. know. Let me know if you guys have, because I've never done that. That's a great point. I've never seen that before. <laughs> yeah. So Jenny's in the back making noise. The pizza guy's like, hey, what do you have in your trunk? And, you know, Darla's putting on the sexual tension or whatever you want to say. She's like, you want to see? You want to come see? Yeah, <laughs> you really want to see? And he's like, I better not. I'll get in trouble. Well, anyways, Darla goes to the trunk. Basically tells Jenny to stop making noise. Jenny says she can't breathe, so she opens a hole. But she's, not, but she's not even mean about it. She's just no. like, here, like, stop making so much noise, Jenny. And Jenny's like, okay, well, I can't breathe. And Darla's like, oh, here, I'll open a hole. And Jenny's like, okay, thanks. Like, yeah. it's like very chill. Yeah, Darla has no concern either because at the same time, some cops pull up. Okay, I don't understand what it, what this scene was at all. Do I you? No, this is, so I don't. Let me just explain it to you. Maybe you guys can figure it out. So the cops pull up. Right as Darla's opening that hole in the bag for Jenny to breathe, she shuts the trunk as soon as one of the officers walks up. So they're in the line, the drive through line as well. But the cop wants to make a move. It's a dude cop. Yeah, but there was a guy and a girl. I thought they thought, obviously, something was weird. So they wanted to talk to her. It was kind of weird why they were even approaching her. Yeah, somebody's got to do it. In your dreams. No, I think the guy was going to make a move on her. Oh, okay. It was weird. So he walks up, tries to hit on Darla. Darla kind of like flirts a little, but basically just leaves him hanging. Why even have this part in the movie? I don't know. I don't get it. I so, don't know. So, so yeah, the cop strikes out. Darla leaves. And then they even drive by her staring at her and then take off. But Darla's not concerned. Darla couldn't care. It's no. like, I mean, she's crazy. That, right. That's what it is. She's just insane. So she goes, Darla goes back to the family house. On the way, she comes across Heather's body in the road. 
And I think she even <laughs> she even has like a little cook moment where she like hits the body. Yeah, wait, did we see how Heather got out of the? Because wait, she I was, don't remember. She last we saw Heather, she was on the hook. Somehow she's in the front of the house. I don't remember how she got there. Okay, I don't remember them ever showing it, but she's just crawling on the ground. I think she just got off the hook somehow. Okay, that's weird, but okay, we'll we'll roll with it. Yeah, you're right though. She does start hitting her. Like she's trying to kill her, but then she just gives up and she's like, all right, just don't crawl too far. <laughs> yeah. And then I think she ends up later on sending W.E. out to get yeah. her. So, OK, this is where, again, we start going off the rails. <laughs> we get to the family house and we get to see Vilmer and uh, Darla's relationship. You having a bad day, huh? Why are my batteries not charged? And it's aggressive. <laughs> They're together. OK, there's something here. It starts off very aggressive. There's lots of yelling. And uh, I mean, Vilmer, Vilmer's very like irritated because she didn't charge his batteries to his remote, which we find out controls his legs. Yes. Which I have to talk about. Okay. So he's got this contraption on his leg and it's like this bionic, like uh, battery powered dill, right? Well, all we know is that it looks metal and it makes the, the noise. What was like that? Like hydraulics. Yeah. Is what it's like, wing, 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 you know? Yeah. And for some reason, I question the way he controls this leg. It's with a remote control. But I don't see him controlling it with a remote control, nor do I think that's practical. Right. Or you might wonder why. I, I don't know. Yeah. I don't know why. And you would think like, okay, maybe he has one remote control and a lot of batteries in case that remote control dies. That's not the way he operates this. He just has like a hundred of these remote controls that he like cycles. Through. Okay. You know what it's like? It's like TV remotes. Like some remotes work, some don't. That's kind of how it works with his leg. Some remotes uh, work for it. Some don't. <laughs> but instead of just like changing batteries in one remote, he just, I think has like eight different remotes. He cycles I'm saying. through. Some it's work weird. for it. Some don't. <laughs> yeah. It's really, it's really bizarre. Well, and that's the thing. If you're going to have this hydraulic leg, Make it do something like make it really powerful. It doesn't seem that powerful. Yeah. I mean, he does use it. Don't well, get me wrong. I don't know. It's a good stomper. Yeah. But it, if, okay, in my opinion, if you're going to have this leg, make it a one stomp, you're out. You know what I'm saying? Maybe. Yeah. I, I see what you're saying. Okay. I'll buy that. Thank you. So, <laughs> so we have Darla and Vilmer. They're fighting back and forth. Again, Vilmer's not afraid of a little domestic violence. Oh, he likes it. He, well, I think he likes being hit. And I think he likes hitting and they both kind of are into it. It's just a physical bad relationship. Yeah, it's bad. <laughs> it's bad. So they bring Ginny in, they sit her down in this chair and this is where Vilmer just gets on her lap and has a talk with her. He gets in her face and it just basically is like torturing her. <laughs> you don't do? f believe this, do you? Well, he does a lot of like, like gets like right up, like, <laughs> like right here, like, are you afraid? <laughs> do you know? Do you know what fear is? <laughs> do you? <laughs> I don't like it. I don't like it. But that's what <laughs> that's what he does, right? Yeah. He's very like in her face and aggressive. Like, well, to but ten. you missed a part. He also does this. <laughs> Yeah, he sticks his he sticks his two fingers in her mouth. <laughs> Vilmer actually makes me a little like uncomfortable how over the top he is. But that's what I like about the way McConaughey plays him. It's insane. It is insane. Yeah. So okay, so we have that scene, and then they end up going off. Like uh, Darla takes Jenny up to the, like a different room for a little girl talk. Yeah. Now this is officially the point the movie goes off the rails for me. So this is the point where Darla explains what is really going on. You may think this is just a sadistic family that likes killing people. Which is what it was in the past. Just cannibals trying to eat. No, no, no. Who killed Kennedy? Oh, the Illuminati. <laughs> it's these people. So she says for the past 1,000, 2,000 years, the people that Vilmer is working for are these people. They're those same ones that killed Kennedy. They're part of the Illuminati. It's all true. I mean, who do you think killed Kennedy? That's who Vilmer works for. It's a giant conspiracy. This it's higher a much order. bigger thing. And you know, at the time when you're watching this, in real time, I'm like, okay, they're crazy. Whatever, right? They're just they're just showing us how crazy these people are. Yeah, because earlier Vilmer, when he's giving uh, Ginny a lap dance, <laughs> he's talking about the FBI surveillance. You don't think, you remember he's like, FBI's, and you don't think they're listening to this? Yeah, there's like cameras around and stuff yes. or whatever. So you do think they're a little nuts. 
They're not. <laughs> <laughs> we'll get to it. This is weird. So they finish up. Darla and Jenny finish up this convo because Vilmer arrives. And Vilmer comes in the room. I forget. He probably throws Darla out of the room. Whatever. And that's where he basically has Jenny beg for her life and tell him why she should be alive. <laughs> to watch. Okay. Okay. Wait, wait. This is my favorite part. Because she gives, she gives the best answer, apparently. Which is, so Vilmer asks, why are you like, no, 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 wait, what does he ask her? Why should I keep you alive? Why should I keep you alive? And Jenny says, you want me alive for some reason. That's a good answer. <laughs> There's some reason you want me alive. And he's like, genius. Yep, yeah. That's it. Hunter, Hunter, <laughs> you knocked it out of the park. <laughs> I'm like, what? Yeah. Yeah. But so, again, it works because it's insane. It works. It works. <laughs> yep. So they go from this room back to the kitchen, and this is where Vilmer goes straight domestic violence. Yeah, so they go into the kitchen. He, like, strangles Darla, like, throws her down. He's just, like, and I forget what it was even over. Well, they, oh, there I, might think, not I know what it reason. was. I think it was because she told him about the Illuminati or something. Oh, okay. I, I don't even remember. Who knows? He throws her around, and that's where, remember, he steps on her neck. Oh, and he's got the hydraulic thing going. Like yeah. He, he thought he might kill her in that moment. Yes. And again, she he's always close to killing her like multiple times. Yeah. This is just what they do, though, I think. Yeah. <laughs> and at this point, we have W.E. in the room. He kind of like meandered in. We have Vilmer and Darla. Jenny's there. She grabs the shotgun because no one's even looking at it. Picks it up. You guys have to realize, too, this is all chaos. Like, there's just, like, fighting going on all the time during these scenes. Yeah, there's a lot going on. So she holds up Vilmer and takes control of the situation. We also have Heather that's just laying on the floor bleeding out here. I guess oh, yeah, w I forgot. Her I don't know if we there. said Heather's back there, the one who got hooked on the ground. Hey, don't worry. There's not really much else that happens, except for yeah, one there's thing. There's one, one other thing. thing. So Dar Jenny's trying to wake up Heather on the ground. That's not really working. Heather uh, uh, said she's looking for her shoes and then passes back out. Yeah. So she, Jenny actually tries to kill Vilmer and does pull the trigger. Yeah. But misfires. Yeah. They, nothing happens. Vilmer grabs the gun, goes kind of nuts, just blows out a window because his it didn't misfire when he pulled the trigger. Yeah. I don't know how shotguns work, but okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't. <laughs> yeah. So he blows out a window and then he does what I would say is like something from Star Wars. Like, well, I don't even know what you call him. A yeah, like Jawa cheer. Or... It, yeah. I think it's a Jawa. It puts the hands over the head with a gun. Like, <laughs> <laughs> you know, <laughs> and then Jenny just decides she's going to leave. Yeah. She's like, I'm out of here <laughs> and just takes off. Yeah. So she runs out the door, gets to the car and Vilmer goes from the top ropes. Dude, I, I saw this. I'm like, this is a straight WWE moment. So instead of running out the door with her, he goes up to the top story somehow, gets out the window and jumps on top of the car. Yeah, jumps <laughs> on the car, which, you know, Jenny takes off. I, I think he gets knocked off the car at some point. She doesn't make it very far, though, because the hood comes up. She can't see. She wrecks into something. It's like a barrel. There was some giant barrel. She goes to get out of the car, and then we have Vilmer, who is underneath the car. Grab her. And Vilmer's loving this, by the way. He's like, it's not like he's mad. He's just enjoying the chase. That yes. is who Vilmer is. From here, Jenny gets kind of drugged back in the house. And then we're kind of like cut between some few, a few scenes. We have the Leatherface classical music pretty woman scene. Oh, yeah. Leatherface's um, cross-dresser? Yeah, this isn't. <laughs> I don't think it's just a mask. He goes in like full get up, right? Yeah, I think he's got like lipstick on and stuff. So, and he wants, we, we do find out later, he wants Jenny's face. So, whatever that means. I don't yeah, know. so there's like a, <laughs> but it's weird. They put on like classical music. That's its whole other thing. It just kind of happens real quick. Then we go back to a weirder scene where we have Jenny, not Jenny, we have Darla and Vilmer. And Darla gets a hold of one of Vilmer's remotes. And this is what I would call it, like a very like crazy mating ritual. No, no, no. This is what we call foreplay in the business. <laughs> so Darla's like hitting the remotes to Vilmer's leg, which he can't control. So she has the power, which Vilmer likes. I told you he likes being beat up. Like yeah. that's his love language. <laughs> yeah. So this goes on for a while. She's hitting the button. You get to hear this lake way too many times. Long story short, she takes pizza into room and tells him to come in there and get some. Well, know? before the pizza gets cold. I think you guys all know what that means. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> now we get to the iconic dinner scene. 
Now, you may be thinking this is like the dinner scene from the first TCM. No, again, we're off the rails at this point. Well, gr I will say Grandpa is here, and we get our first appearance. Grandpa is here, and uh, he's a much more lively Grandpa. Well, I, I, I don't know. Yeah, I guess he's more alive than in TCM 3, where he was already dead. Yeah. <laughs> he's, this is the most lively grandpa we have. Yeah, you're right, because he walks. Okay, before, we'll get we get, before we get in there, let me set up the stage of who we have at this dinner One table. One might say, set the table. Hmm, one <laughs> might. So we have grandpa. We have W.E., we have Vilmer, Darla, Leatherface, Heather, and Jenny all at the table, and... We have some guests. Just a couple dead people. Who There's, are they, you might ask? No idea. No idea. There's three random dead people. Never explain, table. just dead people there. <laughs> yeah, but they don't really look like, they look like they've been taken care of. Like you said, they look embalmed or something. Yeah, I think they're into like doing that kind of thing. Yeah, sure. Why not, right? Sure. <laughs> so Darla explains to Jenny that she has a bomb in her head. You put this little thing in my head and all he has to do is push one little button and... and, and <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> that's why she's stuck here because Vilmer implanted a bomb. Do you see scars? Some type of surgery? No. Well, that's the thing. I don't know if this is that's true or not, because in this movie that they've this whole scene or, you know, the, working for the Illuminati, all this junk. Some of it's true that he might have implanted a bomb in her head. I don't know. <laughs> it's true. We just don't know. Yeah, I don't. it's crazy. So Jenny, there's a, there's a lot of back and forth, a lot of yelling, slapping, whatever. Jenny decides she's going to get strong. Well, here, before that, though, my favorite part, my favorite part of the movie is when Vilmer just screams in Jenny's face. <laughs> oh, yeah. Because <laughs> this is McConaughey, and I love the way he played this insane role. You're right. He goes right up to her ear and just full on 100% screams at it. <laughs> Why? I don't know, but it works. You're right. That's that what I'm saying. Good. I love the craziness. I mean, like, I was laughing when this happened. I'm just like, oh my God. <laughs> He's a menace. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. So he does the screaming and then Jenny decides she's going to stand up for herself. She gets strong. She calls Vilmer pathetic. Vilmer has a weird reaction to this because I think it's like one of those things when the woman's strong, Vilmer's weak. You yeah, I, I think he likes it. I think he likes women that stick up to him. Yeah, so he doesn't take it out on Jenny, who's yelling at him, calling him pathetic. <laughs> no, he slams Darla down. And, and poor W.E. W.E. <laughs> he just gets knocked out. I don't know what Vilmer grabbed. He does this kind of roundhouse throw into Vilmer or W.E.'s face. You know, this is where... <laughs> This is where Grandpa really like got some points with me. Grandpa's had enough of this. He picks up a knife off the table and walks out of the room, never to be seen again. That's the only thing we saw Grandpa do. <laughs> uh, W.E. was talking to Grandpa at the table. Grandpa had no reaction. But after... <laughs> I wouldn't say talking. I would say ear f him. <laughs> Yeah, you're right. <laughs> w is so annoying. But yeah, Grandpa had it up. It just leaves. There was never even a mention of him. In fact, I don't even know if the he was really there the whole time. <laughs> like when they filmed it, did they was he actually at the table or they add that in later? You know uh, what I'm saying? Who knows? <laughs> who knows? But that's the last we see of Grandpa. Now, you may be thinking Ginny had this big empowerment moment. She's just going to leave or do something like shoot one of them and just, you know, take off. Yeah. No, Vilmer just comes back in and lights Heather on fire. <laughs> yeah. Dude, again, the craziness. Yeah, Vilmer just pours gasoline, lights Heather on fire. Heather walks in the wall, but then Darla puts her out. Yeah. Thank you. So Heather's still alive at this Heather, point. Poor Heather. This, this is just a body being destroyed. <laughs> Dude, Do you know what I mean? Right. Like, she's just, like, laying around and people are picking on her. <laughs> right. <laughs> That's horrible. Yes. Just horrible. All right. Now, at this point, you may be thinking, wow, you guys are right. This movie's gone off the rails. I don't know what's going on. It's It's got to be coming to an end. It is. But we're not even at the crazy part yet. Well, I think we are now. Correct. We have just <laughs> arrived because we have a man pull up in a limousine. So, yeah, the guy's in a suit and tie, makes it seem like he's got some money. He kind of has like an F. You know what? If you guys watch the Goonies, it's like the cops in the Goonies. You know what I'm talking about? I mean, dude, when they find the guy in the freezer. Oh, yeah, yeah, whatever. Yeah. Anyways, it's like it looks like a cop outfit, cop mafia almost thing. Anyways, he walks in with his driver. He's got a chauffeur with him, right? right? And this is where we take a really weird turn. So the guy addresses Vilmer. So this is the guy Vilmer works for. Yeah, it's kind of like, what are you doing, Vilmer? 
This is appalling. Yeah, so that whole Illuminati talk, again, this is real, apparently. Yeah, this, this is world. Mr. Rothman, I think is his yes, name. Yes, you're right. So he, he berates Vilmer calling him a silly boy. Yeah, you've been There's a, a silly lot. boy. Like, he's not happy with the way he's been acting. But it doesn't really, like, explain a lot of how he should be. Well, they kind of touch on it, but calls him silly. And you think, okay, this guy, maybe he's going to, like, bring some order to the chaos. Yeah, maybe Vilmer got out of control and he's going to set everything straight. Whatever that he's supposed to do, who knows? Because he has, like, a calming tone to him. Yeah. So the guy walks over to Jenny, who's sitting in a chair, and is kind of explaining to her, like, how... He the whole purpose of this, I guess, is to know the meaning of horror. I want these people to know the meaning of horror. It doesn't make sense. I don't know. Were they watching this the whole time? Because they never showed like that there were cameras there or what that really means to show people the meaning of horror. Why he even wants this to happen. It doesn't. It's never explained. <laughs> no, yeah, nothing's explained and. I don't know. It's like, yeah, like, do they have a feed where other people are watching this? There's a, that's total speculation because they don't talk about it. That would make more sense that like it's this Illuminati that just likes to watch these crazy things. That, that would at least make that sense. That actually would. But they didn't show any of that. No, so we just, don't know. <laughs> it just seems like this random guy just showed up to check in on it or something. Yeah. And I would say we're supposed to we're supposed to understand maybe that they're watching this i think well i guess they did talk about the surveillance but you don't see cameras on the walls or anything so anyway so this weirdo (laughs) walks over to jenny and this is like to me the most disturbing scene is when he pulls up his shirt and he's got like i would say like aztec skin (laughs) (laughs) well that's not his skin isn't that a shirt under a shirt Oh, I thought that was no, that's skin because he has rings in him. Oh, see, I thought I thought it was another shirt under it, but who knows? Maybe we'll go with it. Maybe it's no, his skin. So he's got like this deformed skin and he's got these like gold rings in him. Yeah, and if you guys know what that means, let us know because I have no idea. I saw the rings and I'm like, what the heck is that? Yeah, I think that's to tell some you of that you, some of you freaks out there probably <laughs> know. <laughs> I think this is meant to say things are about to get weird. Yeah. So he goes over to Jenny after trying to kind of calm her licks her face and i'm not talking about like a little lick like he's really like getting into her face and multiple times dude he's really going to town in the face like an ice cream cone yeah (laughs) which is odd because the family's not cannibals in this movie so why is he licking face well he's not even a family member he's just an illuminati guy that's running the show that just showed up that likes to lick face a face licker well he likes to taste horror after they've experienced it maybe that's what it is he likes the taste of horror. He eats, uh, it's a horror eater. <laughs> <laughs> so he does this and then he kind of just leaves. Yeah, he and he did, but he tells Vilmer he doesn't like the way Vilmer's been handling things. Vilmer's kind of effed everything up, like fix it, and he goes. He's gone. Yes, to watch Vilmer gets a little upset. And as we know, Vilmer doesn't take it out on the person who upsets him. No, he finds Heather on the ground, and this is where we see that leg come into play. Well, it almost was like Vilmer was malfunctioning. And I almost thought, do they control Vilmer, like, with a remote as well? Because he looks like he's just lost his mind. Yeah. Like, he's like, like he, he as a person is malfunctioning. But the hydraulic leg comes into play, and by Heather. Yeah, Heather's head gets smashed like a pumpkin on Halloween. <laughs> <laughs> rip so from this jenny takes off and i thought she was going to escape she runs into this other room looks like she might find a window but no she gets caught by vilmer dragged back into the dinner Dude, table room. so many of these like crazy fights chase scenes that just like go back you know what i'm saying they it's like resets. Nowhere. Yeah. yeah it's like it's whatever you so get they, away nope you're back at the family house nope back you know so vilmer is trying to set uh jenny up with a, a classic leather face head chop Oh, Leatherface got the chainsaw. He's kind of holding her down, but Leatherface is trying to line it up. It's really not going well. And Jenny gets a hold of old, again, the Vilmer remote control. That controls his leg, yes. Yeah, he's got to figure something else out. Well, he doesn't because, well, we'll talk about that. Anyway, she starts hitting the leg. He can't control it. She escapes. We get the scene where she takes off. Leatherface takes off after, and we have McConaughey on the front yard, and he, like, gets his remote. I think he's kind of messing with his remote, gets it fixed. And he does the classic, get her leather. Get her leather. Get her leather. Yeah, I did love that. Again, I like that another callback, and it was great. I gotta be honest, I like that scene. Yeah, it was good. 
I mean, I love all the callbacks they do in this movie. And like you said, they did a ton of them, which is why I, part of the reason I even like this movie even more. All right. Well, we'll get to Just that wait when we you. finish up here. Yeah. <laughs> Jenny takes off. Now it, it's daytime meet, now, by the way. It is daytime. You're right. And she meets Mr. and Mrs. Scottish. Thank you, Mrs. Scottish. <laughs> <laughs> Just a nice elderly couple in an RV. Yeah. Drinking Bloody Marys. Yeah. Just yeah. traveling, drinking a couple Bloody Partying, Marys. Man. Jenny comes running out. They pull her into the RV. Leatherface is chasing them. Mr. and Mrs. Scottish are trying to get away. And somehow, all of a sudden, Leatherface is with Vilmer in a truck yeah, next to him. Well, again, now I'll throw back TCM2. Leatherface in the back of the truck with a chainsaw. Yeah, it's the <laughs> TCM2 scene where he's swinging at the RV. Old Mr. Scottish can't really control the RV. Wrecks it. Because Okay, I slowed this one down, too. Because there's a pile of sticks that he decides to run into. <laughs> yeah, he. I think Mr. Scottish is He was not, clearly drunk, too. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> this dude was hammered. So the RVs crash. Jenny gets out of it. Leatherface, or not Leatherface, Vilmer ends up chasing her. She's going down this, like, runway. I'm going to say runway it, because of what's about to it happen. It did look like kind of runway-ish. But it's or like a dirt, dirt road, road, whatever. Yeah. And you see an airplane around. Yeah, and you're like an old prop plane. You're like, what is this? Yeah, what could this airplane be doing? Well, as Vilmer's chasing Jenny, we have one of the most ridiculous scenes ever where uh. the airplane comes down and decides it's going to just chop up Vilmer in flight, which I don't know any, I don't know if any of you guys are pilots. This seems like a very bad decision to do when you're flying an airplane. Yeah, it seems like a difficult thing to do. And Jenny was also very close. Plus, if you're going to, so the idea is the Illuminati killed Vilmer. Right? Yeah, but you guys can't skip over how ridiculous this was. This plane came down I mean, with true. its <laughs> propeller, hits Vilmer, kills him, and takes off. And that's the last you see I'm, the plane. <laughs> yeah, and I'm pretty sure 99% of the time that plane is going to wreck. Yeah, I don't know, but I would imagine so. <laughs> I'm pretty sure you can't just go hit things with a prop of a plane and just take off. Yeah. Haven't tried it, though. And so now Vilmer is down and he is presumably dead. Yes. So Jenny's running away now, and then Mr. Rothman comes back in the limo. Yeah, the limo picks her up. She gets in. And, and Leatherface stands down. Leatherface knows, like, okay, Mr. Rothman's here. I'm done. Yes, yeah. So she's in the back with Rothman, which she was shocked to see him in there. I guess she didn't know he drives the limo. Well, I'd be shocked, too, because it makes no sense. He showed up, licked her face, then leaves, and then comes back to save her. Why? Doesn't make sense. No, why wouldn't you just kill Vilmer at the house when you wanted, if you wanted to, right? It doesn't, uh, instead, let's knows? use a plane to kill him. I don't who know. knows? <laughs> so he basically tells her again, there's more horror talk, the whole situation. He talks about people like him. I don't know. Who cares about this guy? I mean, well, yeah, he basically just says, hey, I'll take you wherever you want. I'm sorry this happened. It wasn't the way I wanted it to. And she goes to the hospital. Yeah, he drops her off at the hospital. In the hospital, she's talking to a cop. The cop's saying, saying that we'll figure out what's going on. And then we see a patient being willed by. Did you know who that was? <laughs> okay, I didn't at first. I'm like, that girl looks familiar. And I looked it up. It's freaking Sally. Yeah. Which I thought was great. Again. Yeah, there's a Sally was in TC1, the one who got away. Yeah, the one who got away, who went to a men mental institution. What she's at the hospital, it's just, I mean, it doesn't really make sense, to be honest, why Sally randomly would be being willed around in an emergency room. But it's cool. But it's cool. Because she's supposed to be at like a mental health care that's not like the emergency room. I get it. I know. Anyways. Hey, if that's the thing that bothers you about this movie, <laughs> you've missed the entire point. <laughs> yep. And then we have the final Leatherface stance. Dude, what would, okay, I'm going to say this. I like this dance a lot. I think it's an aggressive dance with the saw. Well, I'm going to put a short out because I'm going to see what people think. This one or the original. Who Is did that? it better? Yeah. That was Texas Chainsaw Massacre, The Next Generation. And that was a journey we all just went on together. <laughs> so now it's time for us to give our final ratings. And our ratings go must-see, check it out, if board watch, or skip it. What do you think? Must-see. <laughs> You're going with a must see. I loved I really liked this movie. Every time I watched it, I enjoyed it more. And I think it's really, I, I like Matthew McConaughey's performance. And I think Jenny, obviously Renee Zellweger, I like her character too. But mainly Vilmer had me dying laughing because it was insanity. <laughs> this movie is so off the rails. My personal rating, I'm, I'm going with if bored, give it a watch. Definitely not on the top of my list. Oh, dude, I loved it. I thought it was insane. Dude, I... Uh, it is insane. I don't hate it. I don't hate any of these movies. It's kind of hard. I hate rating them to be honest, because 
I, I've watched this like three times and it kind of grows on you, the weirdness of Th- it. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. But I'm not going to tell someone to go ch- must see. Uh, I mean, maybe <laughs> check it out. Maybe no, no, check you it said out. It. It's <laughs> must see. We're done. I did like, like, I liked the, all the callbacks to CCM1. I like, because it felt like for some of the movie, I'm like, this feels so much like it that it's ridiculous. They brought the sound effects. It's weird they weren't cannibals, though. And I'll say this. This may be a controversial take. The, people are way too pretty in this movie. What do you, what do you mean? Just the everyone just looks too good? McConaughey, Darla, Renee Zellweger, Heather. Everyone's like very good looking people. Even the the uglier, <laughs> I should say that. Even <laughs> some of the other characters who aren't like the pretty ones, they, they looked like clean. Yeah, you know what right. I mean? Opposed to TC Moore, where everything was dirty and just rustic and yeah, sweaty. I like the grit, dirty family. That's yeah, but like this you is can a, smell them. This is a different thing, though. You know what would I'm saying? Would you say this is a new generation? I would say <laughs> I, I would say it's a new generation. Guess what, guys? I'm here for it. Yeah. <laughs> Sign me up, McConaughey. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's move on to a little bit of trivia, some behind the scenes. Matthew McConaughey says his dazed and confused catchphrase, all right, all right, all right, in this movie. Oh, shut up. That, that's what they say in the trivia. I also did not hear it. I wonder where that happened. I never heard that. I don't feel like it was in the version I watched. He, if he did, it must have been all right, all right, all right. Like that, not all not, right, all right, all right. Yeah, because I love that line. I would have caught that, Yeah, I think. All right, all right, all right. This was filmed on location at the abandoned farmhouse in Pflugerville, Texas, and oh. nearby Bastrop. The majority of the cast and crew were locals from Austin. Oh, okay. That's cool. The only reason I know of Pflugerville isn't it in the radio transmissions in the video yeah. game. <laughs> yeah, there's probably so many nods in the game that you don't even realize are to all these different movies. Well, there are, because we've noticed it after going through the TCMs. I'm like, oh, this is from that. This is from that. You want examples? I don't have them because I don't remember. Yeah. <laughs> this would be the last film in the series where Marilyn Barnes, portrayed by Sally Hardesty, she would only reappear in Texas Chainsaw 3D, and that's the 2013 movie, as Sally via archive footage, and a completely different character named Verna Carson. <laughs> I haven't watched this yet due to her passing in 2014. I didn't even know she passed away. Wait, but who was in? Oh, wait, they recast her. Oh, that's a different lady. Okay. Yeah, so she was one. recast in the new one. And that came oh, out in 2022. I didn't even know that. Okay. Gunnar hints in the original Leatherface was asked to return to for his role, but he asked for too high of a salary for such a low budget film. <laughs> and I would say it's a good decision because this film is not for Gunner. No, we need Gunner in a more traditional Leatherface. Yeah. <laughs> You know what's funny? Leatherface, I guess he played a role, but it, to me, he wasn't as pivotal as in like the TCM one. He was almost a se- total secondary character. Yeah, yeah. In fact, I don't even, he only, did he only have one kill? Yeah, I guess just that one guy with a mallet. I think. Did he even get a, he didn't even get a chainsaw kill? Oh my gosh, guys, I don't, I don't think he did. That's why this movie desor- deserves a bad rating. No, you can't but that's have a why... Leatherface that doesn't even get a chainsaw kill. That's what makes it even more ridiculous. <laughs> I don't know about that. Here, speaking of killing, none of the killings are shown on camera. That naps in a blood make the film a least graphic of the entire franchise. That does make sense because, yeah, I never saw even the hook. You don't really even see it. I mean, you see her, uh, her presumably placed on a hook, but you don't see any blood really from it. Yeah, it's it, there's not a lot. When asked about the movie, Renee Zellweger said it was dangerous. I don't know if any of it was legal. <laughs> Hell yeah. <laughs> It was a great workout. Running from a guy with a live chainsaw is excellent motivation. It was a lot of fun. It was my first role, really, and I couldn't believe that someone was going to trust me with that, that someone was going to take this chance on me. I was really grateful. I have no shame about the movie. And props to you, Renee, because this may be the best film you've ever acted. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. That makes me like Renee Zellweger more. That she, I know. That's pretty cool. I thought she did great, Ed. She was fun to watch. So the movie is a recursive in that it opens. With, I'm acting like I know what that really means. I really don't. That it opens with a, oh my God. Okay. In the beginning of this movie, I'm going to paraphrase because there's this, the way this trivia is word is weird. Big, big words. Yes. <laughs> so in the beginning, in the opening scene that I read, uh, minor yet apparently relating events. So in that report or whatever, the scrolling text, it's a joking acknowledgement of the previous two sequels. Oh, because they're kind of ridiculous. Yeah. That makes sense because I thought it was weird the way they worded that. Yeah. That's funny. See? You guys, you have to understand this movie comes from a little bit more of a humor aspect. Yes. That's my take on it. <laughs> sure, sure. So intended by writer, producer, director Kim Hinkle to be the real sequel to Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Oh, that makes so sense. So it does. That's weird with these movies. They jump so all over the place. It's hard to like 
really understand what they're going for. Yeah, it's like this one isn't even related to TCM 2 or 3 now. Yeah. Okay, wait, here we go. The characters of Vilmer and W.E. were intended to be Hitchhiker and Cook from the Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Jim Saito was approached, but he wasn't able to do it. Oh, interesting. So, so W.E. and Vilmer? So W.E. was supposed to be Cook and Vilmer was supposed to be Hitch? Yeah, but man, he was nothing like Hitch. I mean, I'm sure they changed. Obviously, the rules yeah. changed quite a bit. So the next generation was noted for its implementation of a secret society subplot driving Leatherface's family to terrorize people in order to provoke them to a level of transcendence. In a retrospective interview, writer-producer-director Kim Hinkle confirmed that the basis of the subplot was influenced by theories surrounding the Illuminati. I don't know if there's more to that. It still doesn't, <laughs> it still doesn't really make sense. I don't understand why they're terrifying people if they're killing them. I yeah. mean, it seems like the, the plan the whole time is to kill them all, I think. Yeah, they were going to kill, they were gonna kill uh, Renee, Jenny at the end. Well, what does that do for anyone? I feel like we need to watch a, like, a real behind the scenes of like what they were really going for, other than just the Illuminati. Like, what was the real purpose there? Well, yeah, like, why did the Illuminati want to see this? Yeah. Did they see this? I don't know. I think the best case scenario, there's like a room with these weird rich people that are watching some video feed trying to live through the fear, the horror. I mean, that would have been cool to see for sure. That would have been better. But anyways, that's our take on uh Texas Chainsaw Mass Massacre. Massacre. <laughs> yeah, the well, next generation. <laughs> now make sure you guys like, subscribe, turn on notifications because the next one Smoke show is coming, man. Jessica Bill will be arriving. <laughs> Thank you guys all for watching. We have a blast doing this, and we're glad that you guys could enjoy it as well. Thanks for hanging out, guys. See ya. See ya.